I've sunk an enemy destroyer. Hey team, this is Ripper here because you're doing fantastic today. Got a fun video about the uh, first day of clan battles and um, my thoughts on everything. And of course, this is the map Shatter that we're going to talk about today and some of the strategies. But before we go ahead like, subscribe, bell button below. Appreciate all the support and the subscribers to the channel. Thanks for building community, making it a better place. We have fun and learn from it as well. At 4,000 subs, do another free premium DD giveaway. So let's get to it. Well, the first week of clan battles has been a debacle uh, as you guys can tell they've removed uh, per war gaming that because of the whole invincibility bug and all a bunch of things that they're introducing which is the first iteration of uh consumables uh, such as uh, like the game the uh, pinata event they're trying to incorporate this into clan battles and there's been a whole mass and debacle we'll talk about that as the video progresses along and uh, just talking about the quick overview of Shatter and the strategy and th our thought process to it. Um, I am playing in another uh, clan uh, now. Uh, a buddy of mine uh, asked me to join, and we're playing. And we're in a little bit of higher leagues now, so we can start playing. Uh, I know you guys have uh, asked me to, hey, try playing at high typhoon, hurricane levels, and uh, to see different perspectives. And it's drastic differences, and we'll talk about it here. But let's talk about the map, map Shatter. And this is playing in, a, I believe, a higher, maybe a storm, maybe typhoon, I forgot, um, battle with uh, other teams. You guys let me know. I, I really don't care. It doesn't matter what league. People are people that do the normal things, and every team is different. They bring different flavors to the, um, the, the uh, map and the strategy. And I like talking about it because everybody's different, and we can always analyze and look at what kind of... Uh, instances that we encounter and the different experiences that we can see and we can, what we can learn from it. So I'm in the Marceau and we can take a look at the uh, the makeup of this. And and now they allow two battleships uh, to, I think that's a little bit better. I think when I first began the game, two battleships was pretty normal. And then you have three cruisers and two destroyers, which is a, I think this is a good compliment for right now because you don't know what the other team has. We have a small one. I have a Marceau, one of the two of the most overpowered uh, destroyers in the game, which I think uh, gives us a very good advantage, very good odds, but also three Napolis on our side, which is definitely overpowered. Um, I know they tried to limit the amount of Napolis or something, but Napoli in itself is one of the most powerful cruisers, I think, in the game. And of course, you have two battleships, which I do like. I don't like having just one battleship to each side or one battleship to one side only. I like having two. Uh, it just it changes up the, the dynamic and allows you a little bit more flexibility so that you're not overwhelmed from one side. We have an Ohio and an R. Loria, which is uh, pretty heavy. And Ohio is one of the best battleships in the game. Loria is the, I believe that's the sap stuff. Um, but forgive me if I'm wrong, but. I know Loria is pretty powerful in that regard regarding sap shells. But let's take a look at the strategy overall. What are we planning on doing? Give my basic overview of the map here. Um, we're going to have me as a Marceau and use my speed and go straight into Alpha. It is an RPF build. So I like RPF nowadays because it gives me situational awareness. And I think it really is improving my gameplay style, having that knowledge rather than maybe a 0.2 second gun reload, which in the end of the day, it doesn't really help me that much because what good are you if you're dead? If I'm dead, the gun reload doesn't matter. But if I know I have a situation where I know where people are at, where I can chase DDs down, or just have situational awareness of the battlefield, I can actually mitigate my death by either pre-gaming, like do I go to the right here, or do I go to the left, knowing where an enemy battleship is. So that gives me options with RPF. Our small is going to, of course, go to Cap Charlie and take two... Um, uh, two uh, cruise or one cruiser that is with them into the the uh, far east, and then we're going to of course have a battleship uh, kind of linger at Charlie, just kind of uh, uh, kind of loiter, and we're going to have two cruisers uh, go to the uh, west here, where we have one Napoli go to the center, and one Napoli go out and support me, and then we'll have the Ohio kind of in reserve and the Alpha just kind of spread out. Now I've noticed that the higher leagues, uh, Typhoon, Hurricane, that I've been playing with, and I've been working with them, so I'm not part of these leagues. Again, I'm just an average player, just likes to. Jump around, uh, merc around, play with different teams, different aspects. And I've met really good friends, really good people. I enjoy the community. And it's really good to see different perspectives because I don't know it all. And I'm, I'm out here to show you guys some different ideas and perspectives as well. 
Uh, what I think in this particular map or uh, battle instance, we have a um, DD goes meets me at on at Alpha. They actually in the higher leagues likes to spread out their uh, battleships and ships, so it's a really stalemate kind of game. At the higher leagues you go, I think it's kind of bad, honestly. I don't like playing in the higher leagues this way. It just stale because everybody is so good at the game that they're just kind of being so overly conservative that most of the time they're, everybody's all spread out and just lingering in the back. And and I think in this team, the cruiser and the destroyer actually move out to the east and, and the replay you'll see and they just kind of ha duke it out here in the the uh the ocean side here and it's really just stale i, I don't know I, I can't put my 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 mind to it and this is kind of like what the battle looks like it's just everybody's spread out and we're kind of just holding out and just seeing who gives in and it just turns into a stalemate and most games i've noticed in the higher leagues uh really just end on points because you no know, everybody's so far back or so conservative so and so good at aiming and so good at dodging that a lot of times the deaths in the game are very, very slow and it, the timer just runs out or just you just win on points. So this is kind of how this actually turned out. Now, being a destroyer player, I do like to talk about my destroyer player um, uh, techniques and uh, what helps me to help out the team. It's not about killing ships as it is about positioning in the uh, clan battles in higher leagues. So um, what I've what I've seen here, so for example, I'm in a Marceau, which I'm going to actually just speed straight to Alpha. I'll have my, of course, two cruisers come over here to support. I believe this is how it sets up. And the battleship's in tow, small in, and it goes caps there and then proceeds with, um, sorry, a uh, cruiser. And this is kind of what the setup looked like. Now, me as a destroyer player, I had RPF going on in this direction. Now, what am I doing? I'm going to probably meet my RPF showed me where the destroyer or closest player that is was so I knew to aim my guns in this direction now what why is that good for me because one I already know where the, the immediate threat is and that's all I care about I care about as a destroyer player what is the closest immediate threat which is typically a destroyer player or submarine and I want to know what direction to point my guns in because first look first kill if I get my guns without having to traverse and waste time I get shots on target faster and I think that's a very detrimental or sorry very um beneficial because then my guns are not taking the time to traverse to get on target and get led down on uh, down range so that's my first goal now <clears throat> as a destroyer player i want to know i'm going to engage this guy right away and immediately egress the area now you always got to give yourself some way of egressing and exit strategy because you don't want to get just go straight and get caught and then get focus fired from multiple angles as a destroyer player because going in the middle right here that's why I never go straight into a cap because you have so many angles of fire that you have to deal with that it does not help out. And I want a, the ability to egress the area at my desire. So if I'm going, if I'm going here uh, to the center, I know I'm going to engage the destroyer right off the bat. So immediately I know I'm going to go cap and then egress the area immediately once I get engaged. As you can see in the video, I'm going to literally just egress and turn away while firing, making sure I take as much damage off this DD as possible while ensuring my survivability so that I can regroup and reassess and run around and continuously contest alpha. And that's my goal. And fortunately, you're going to see here, we're going to eliminate the destroyer. And then after we cap alpha, it's pretty much just saving my HP, staying alive. Don't die. A dead destroyer is no good destroyer. And then I'm going, of course, you're going to see me as a Marceau has the uses in at speed, really traversing the map as a quick reaction force to go where you are needed. So in this case, it was to cap Bravo and then come back, circle around and take alpha from behind again, ensuring our victory based on points. And you can see that how that turns out. So that's kind of like what my basic strategy is there. Let's take a look at the video and see how it turns out. And we'll have a discussion about how I think these new consumables and the new clan battles today is like, and uh, we'll talk about it from there. Hope you uh, guys enjoy, and we'll see you in the next video. All right, team, here we are in the Marceau, charging straight into Alpha right now. The rest of our team is capping Charlie. Bravo is being captured by the enemy, and we have RPF located just off the uh, 2 o'clock position of our uh, a bow there, and you can see as Marceau, very good speed, very good gun bow, very powerful detection poor because it's 7.0, so you're going to get spotted first, but that's why I like RPF better because it mitigates that by saying, hey, look, I at least have the guns pointed in the right direction. I'm capping. I have a, a general idea of where the biggest or the biggest threat right now is to me. I'm also signaling to my team, hey, that's a good communication skill right there. Hey, where is the threat right in front of me? Ooh, I'm spotted right there, and then this is the new consumable for minefield, so we throw the mines there. 
I'm spotted, and I think this is the general direction of where that destroyer is at. Not necessarily sure of who's right there. There's the new consumable at the mines. I'll tell you my take about what I think about it is. I put the um, the uh, minefield where I think the destroyer is going to be and kind of right in front of the area that they're going to take me. I get hit, which uh, oh, actually cap first, and there we go. There's the small one. Now, he has two choices. Either he's going to fire and reveal his position to me, and then I go full DPM gunboat on him, or like he decides not to fire. Very smart player right there, deciding not to shoot, but unfortunately, he gets spotted right away, and then we we are going to go ahead and open fire and take out as much HP as we can. We also have friendly fire, and he decides eventually, hey, I'm about to die. He begins to firing us, which I think is a mistake. He should have used that time to run away. Uh, French saturation helps us out, reduce the damage, and we have full DPM gunboat, which is the highest DPM for a destroyer in the game. And you can see the amount of power and destruction we did on the small one. His heals are not enough to recuperate. He is now spotted from the moon, and everybody takes a shot. And in clan battles, you got way good players that are really good at aiming, and that eliminates the first destroyer right there off the bat and that's exactly what you want to do as a destroyer player you run in spot dd cap dd gunboat kill the dd continuously spot and then torp and then we're doing everything that a normal destroyer should play we are now egressing the area remember i talked about you always want to have to have an exit strategy not to be caught in that situation where you're just either focus fire down your radar or whatnot and that is exactly what the destroyer player should be doing is to egress the area and stay alive for the long haul and duration outside of this this is all i really did as a destroyer because i noticed again uh in clan battles at the higher levels i'm not going out there like i would in randoms where i'm going running around with my head cut off open firing gunboating and everything and just causing a ruckus and damage uh because it just it just doesn't work that well in uh, the higher typhoon hurricane levels because one these guys are really good at aiming i mean me trying to juke these shots is becoming more and more difficult as i've seen the levels go on so i don't recommend actually duking it out going one-on-one -on -one gunboating or i'm sorry multiple gunboating against destroyers and cruiser players because look look my team i'll be although they're there to support me they're not in a position to draw fire because they're not getting spotted they're not shot at and i'm the only one being spotted right now outside of the Ohio battleship, but nobody's firing at the battleship. Everybody wants to fire at the destroyer. Destroyers are the juiciest targets out there and the, the biggest threat in the game, in my personal opinion. And that's exactly why everybody wants to eliminate the destroyer, just like I did with the small one. So vice versa, everybody's going to be shooting at me. So gunboating, as you can see right here, you're going to take, you're going to see, I'm going to actually try to gunboat a little bit, but I know that there's a problem um, you know, trying to do that in the higher tiers because everybody's so good at aiming. Um, notice that the reticle for my predictive uh, torpedo aim is screwed up because of um, the, my uh, now I'm playing this on a virtual Windows platform. I'm playing on Windows finally. I I dropped GeForce. Let me know in the comments what I can do to fix this because they said update your driver, but unfortunately I'm using the driver on my Mac that's running virtuals and uh, virtual Windows, and there's no way to update the driver in Macs and stuff. So I don't really know how to correct that in virtual Windows. I'm, I'm using the program Parallels. Uh, if you guys let, uh, have any um, tips or techniques or a video or a link to send me to to read up about this, I don't know how to fix that. But for now, I have no torpedo aiming rectangle. And if I'm in a battleship, I cannot, I don't know where the rectangle is to drop depth charges. Not that I care. I don't drop depth charges, um, air ASW depth charges from a Marceau. I usually just run over target and hit the uh, G key and drop depth charges the old fashioned way. So that's that. Let's talk about the strategy here. You can see we're all spread out right now. I've, again, I have this new consumable with a minefield where I'm just dropping minefields around a target I think is bad. Now, here's the problem right here. I got caught in someone's radar, and guess what? Everybody's shooting at me. Now I'm going to do the old shake and bake and try to get out of dodge and make sure I um, avoid shots. Now, as a good destroyer player, if you want to know if you're new to the channel, how do you shake and bake? Well, it's really going left, right, left, right, throttle back three-quarter speed, then full throttle. You're basically trying to throw off a lot of these shots because a lot of these guys, when you're aiming as a destroyer i'm sorry a cruiser player or battleship you're kind of leading the target so that you, when you fire the, your guns those shells are going to go exactly where you know, your predetermined point that you had clicked so all you got to do is change your vector and change your egress or movement of the ship just a slight degree of the left slight degree of the right slow down a little bit and that typically throws off the shots because these aren't guided shells right oh god don't do that wargaming uh, but the, since they're not guided, you know, when as soon as they leave the barrel, they're going to um, have a predetermined point where they're going to land. So all you got to do is just not be there. And that's how the basic technique of destroyer dodging and juking and shooting for all those that want to be destroyer players out there that want to learn about that. It's pretty, pretty standard. We're just going left, right, left, right, back, forth, back, forth. You're just trying to throw off the shells. And that's why I like the tar the um, alert indicator you see at my top right uh, of my cursor, where as soon as it lights up, I know somebody's fired at me. Boom, I should change some kind of vector or direction, right? So anyways, I, let's talk about uh, what how the game is progressing. You can see those green circles that are on the new mini map here, which is basically minefields. Um, how do I think about that? 
I don't know. I, I, I don't like minefield. I think it's dumb. That's me. Uh, dropping minefields out of nowhere is like another airstrike ability like uh, that the Gudenlau and the Tromp where they basically drop airstrikes on sitting targets. I think they're trying to stop this whole camping idea of like what these Soviet cruisers are doing, like the Moscow you see right there, grabbing an island, sitting still, and just holding that position for hours on end. I don't know. I think they're trying to stop that and trying to change up the gameplay. Uh, my thoughts on that, I don't really think it's beneficial or I like it. Look, he's going to run into all my minds. So here's a good demonstration of what's happening with the minefields. The cruiser player is trying to go through that. Now, their co counter to that is they drop their own airstrikes or ASWs on the minefields, and hopefully that destroys the, a majority of them to help out and mitigate the minefields. But look, he's just running through a minefield, and I'm getting damage from that. Let me see. If he hits another one, does the damage go up? No. Uh, I mean, he's taking damage. Let's take a look there. Okay, he took he took two. Yeah, you actually get like my my damage counter clicked up. Look, I'm getting damage just for him running into mines. I I don't know. This is just like submarines again. I I don't see the fun and the advantage of it. It's just another deterrence, and I'm getting points for it. Uh, I don't know. It, 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 I digress about it because honestly, I don't think it's. Why can't we just stay keep it simple and just go old school? Position your ship, aim, and it's down to player skill. Who can outshoot and who can survive the longest, and that's it. I, I don't know. I don't know about this whole consumables. Like one is invincibility, the other one is uh, it stops the counter of your points going up. I mean, there's really no skill in that other than hitting a button and letting it seize, stop the game to make it last longer. If you want to do that, just make the ships last uh, more a little bit more survivable rather than giving them abilities such as invincibility or stop the clock from winning. I mean. I don't know. You don't do that in Call of Duty or whatnot, right? Anyways, I digress. So I got my HP being partially restored. Uh, that's a cool, uh, uh, I would say, consumable where everybody's healing up all of a sudden randomly. It's a good survivability. Look, another one's, <laughs> we're using another one. Heals my HP. I was almost dead as a destroyer player, right? But now all of a sudden I'm getting uh, a, a gift sent from heaven where I'm healing my ship miraculously all of a sudden. But as you can see, the push is happening over at Alpha. We've lost a cruiser or battleship, first one down. And the Napoli, like I said, is one of the toughest cruisers to hit. But we got three of them. So very tough on our team right now. And using the speed of the Marceau right here to go right up the middle. This is why it's good to have situational awareness because now I'm looking around the map. Where's the biggest threats right now? Obviously, they're doing a heavy push to alpha i'm gonna basically push up with my napoli because i'm not afraid having a napoli in front of me like a fullback in football and i'm gonna follow him and use my speed to go cap bravo meanwhile he's gonna either draw fire or kill the the moines that's happening on my eastern flank right there and we also have a loria holding uh their own over here uh at charlie which also has a minefield drop right there so minefields uh smoke and all these other weird consumables um Pretty, pretty interesting. Notice there's a Napoli versus a Napoli off the eastern side. I don't know the. I don't know how that. Again, I think it's just the way the game turns out that it allows these situations to happen. I don't know if it's beneficial. It may be fun for the two Napoli's, but is it beneficial for the overall style of strategy and gameplay for them? This kind of map. I mean, we're already seven ships already down. I mean, we only have seven ships in the game for one for two players to go off and duke it off alone in the middle of the ocean to the east. I don't know. It, do, it doesn't seem very beneficial or, in, uh, I guess, you enjoyable for the rest of the team. But, I mean, it's fun for those two guys. Those two Napoli's playing off in the distance is great. But that's just the way the maps are and the, the gameplay style is turning out to be. And, and that's just what it just happens to happen, you know. So uh, they've capped Alpha right now. So as a destroyer player, I'm going to cap Bravo. And we have two points to their one. And it's all about points at this level of high gameplay. And uh, now we're just running around and trying. I'm going to go in circle at Alpha and try to cap uh, Alpha from the, the rear there. So, and that's how much we. That's basically how we win the game right there. It's nothing too cosmic. It's pretty self. Um, explanatory and simple but let me talk about the what the minute i have left in the game right here uh let's talk about uh what what's the state of the game right now as you can tell like from the reddit uh, and the discord and the uh, world of warships update they said that the glitch has become worse and that you make sure that we have clan battles for this weekend uh, as the recording of this video it's still down and clan battles is not going on until maybe they said today or tonight uh so it'd be ready by saturday morning and uh, because there's too many glitches and that this is just wargaming adding more and more more things that they think is beneficial to the game to an already deteriorating code, an old code that's not that has been updated or is just so convoluted that by, by adding anything smaller, just kind of like that butterfly effect where you change one thing, it changes 10 things down the road. That didn't cause problems for the game. Like you've had the aiming bug, you've had the uh, bullet the railgun shells, you've got the uh, aiming problem.
You've got the invincibility problem that they're facing right now. And it's just so many problems. And I think they just need to revamp the code, redo everything, just take it down, start over from scratch. And, and otherwise, it's just going to snowball and down to an even worse situation. But we won the game right there. That's my thoughts. I don't like the consumables. Honestly, I wish we would just go back to normal, normal. But uh, I can't play Kalan Battles for a while because it's down. So until we get a new um, fix right now, this is where we're at. So here's the build-up for the Marceau. Hope you guys are doing well. See, say hi to me outside of... Uh, uh, th this climb battle season. And when you see me out there, salute. And as always, stay safe, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Cheers.